Sabbath. Happy Sabbath once again, Mongaza family. Welcome to the Retime class. My name is Tisha Aska Akieno from Mongaza. I welcome all of you, all uh, the Retime class pupils or students from the age of 13 and 14. Welcome to our Sabbath school, our Sabbath lesson today. And before we proceed, we are going to humble ourselves for a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you this evening. And we pray that your presence may be with us as we share your word. And Father, may you speak to us in a special way as we go through your scriptures. And above all, Father, may your name be glorified above everything. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen. Okay, so boys and girls, welcome to our class today. And uh, today our topic is walking with God. Walking with God. This is the first part of our two series lesson. Next Sabbath we'll have Walking with God part two, but today we are going to have Walking with God part one. Our memory text will come from the book of uh, John chapter one, verse 14. And I'm going to read from the New King James Version. And it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I'm going to repeat our memory text. It comes from the book of John, chapter 1, verse 14. It says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Boys and girls, when God created our world, He created a perfect world. He personally spent time with our first parents, Adam and Eve. And He walked with them every single day. Now, when sin came, when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, that relationship that we had with God was broken. And all through the ages, God has been trying God has been making all attempts to rebuild this relationship that we had with him from the first day that he created us. God wants us to walk with him every day. Remember our topic is walking with God. Now we are going to see how we can walk with God as young boys and girls. In our age of 13 and 14, most of us we do not understand that we are also in we are also needed to walk with God. We may think that when our parents are, are, are involved in church activities, when our parents are praying, when our parents are reading the Bible, now we don't have a role to play in our faith. That Most of us, we, we tend to imagine that our parents, they hold everything uh, on our behalf, but we are also required to walk with God as individuals. Because at the age of 13 and 14, you already know what is wrong and what is right. And God needs each and every one of us. God had already had a plan to rebuild the relationship that was broken in the Garden of Eden. He tried it with the people of Israel. In the wilderness, he walked with them day by day, night by night. He walked with them, showing, his, showing them his grace, his providence, his, his marvelous mercy. He was forgiving them. He never gave up on them until they reached Canaan. More, many times the Israelites would go astray, they would worship idols, they would complain, they would do a lot of things, they would complain against the prophet of God. But God never left them, God walked with them. Because initially God created us so that we may walk with him. He, don't, he doesn't like it when we are far from him. So therefore, boys and girls, God wants us to walk with him. And through this attempt of rebuilding the relationship that we had with him before, he made it, he made that agenda manifest in the life of Jesus Christ. When Jesus came, Jesus came in the form of human being. But Jesus was God. He walked with people, he walked with them in the streets, he ate with them, he dwelt with them, he talked to them, and he listened to them, he healed them. God wants that relationship to be manifest fully when we go to heaven. Today, in our world, in our world we, have, we are facing so many problems, so many tribulations. We, we are forgetting that our God is always present with us. And what He requires from us is that we may accept Him to be our friend so that He may walk with us. God is always ready. All 
always willing and ready to walk with us each and every day, each and every step of the way. God is never going to leave us. So, boys and girls, we are going to read. Uh, before we read any other scripture, we are going to see our belief. Number one, I always say, tell you that in, uh, as Adventists, we have 28 fundamental beliefs. And one of the fundamental beliefs, which is belief number one, is the Holy Scriptures. That is our belief number one. As Adventists, we believe that everything that we do must be based in the Scriptures and Scriptures alone. Therefore, our belief number one that we are going to see today is the Holy Scripture. The Holy Scriptures, Old and New Testaments, are the written word of God, given by divine inspiration. The inspired authors spoke and wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. In this word, God has committed to humanity the knowledge necessary for salvation. So let no one separate you from the Holy Scriptures, because it is only through the Scriptures that we are, we are corrected, it's only in the scriptures that we will have the knowledge that is necessary for us, for our salvation, for our daily living, and even for our social life. So that is belief number one, the Holy Scriptures. Never forget that. Uh, boys and girls, uh, God wants us to be friends with Him. In the Bible, He repeatedly spoke to His people, commanding them to return to Him. Although our sins have taken us away from but God is always willing and ready to accept us back and to walk with us. Even, even during hard times, even during hard times like the one we have now of this pandemic, Corona, God is willing and is ready to walk with us. He has never left us. Let us read, let us read a, a verse from the, Matthew, from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 20. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, and verses 20. And it says, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. It says, And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Those are the words of Jesus Christ himself, telling us, assuring us, that even though we might be going through hard times, even though we might be scared and afraid and uncertain of what may befall us, he has promised and Jesus never lies. He has promised. He says, and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So Jesus is always with us. Let us not worry. Let us spend time with him. How can we walk with God as teenagers? How can we walk with God? We can walk with God through reading the scriptures, Bible study, through singing hymns, through serving others, is how we can walk with God. So let us all of us let us try to be friends with God so that we walk with Him in our daily lives. There is a story of our hero, one, one of the heroes, one of the world heroes called Nelson Mandela. I'm not going to read the entire story of Nelson Mandela, but Nelson Mandela, Mandela wrote a book called Long Walk to Freedom. In his book, he stated about his life about his life, how he, he was born and how he suffered and how he managed to conquer his fears. And I'm going to quote one, I'm going to quote a paragraph in his book which says, I have walked that long road to freedom. I have tried not to falter. I have made missteps along the way, but I have discovered the secret that after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. I have taken a moment here to rest, to steal a view of the glorious vista that surrounds me, to look back on the distance I have come, but I can rest only for a moment. For with freedom comes responsibility, and I dare not linger, for my work is yet is not yet ended. That, that, that could really told me, inspired me and encouraged me that however much we may walk with God and sometimes we might see that we have conquered some problems, we should not relax. Our walk with God is not yet ended. Our walk with God is going to end when Jesus comes to take us home. And when we read the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse, uh, verse 3, it's, it's the last verse we're going to read, the book of Revelation, 
chapter 21 and verse 3, it says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. That is when our walk. That, that, is where, where, that is where our work is leading us. Our work is leading us to live with God forever. God wants to dwell with us, to walk with us, to be with us. He wants us to be in his presence, to be our God and to be his people. So, boys and girls, don't forget that we have to walk with God in every single day. In hard times, let us walk with God. In good times, let us walk with God. In everything, let us not forget that God is our friend. He is always willing. Even if sometimes we might go astray, let us remember that God is always willing and ready to accept us back. God is always willing to protect us, to cover us with his blood. He is always willing and ready to receive us as his children. So remember to walk with God. Until next Sabbath, when we have our second part of this topic, walking with God, may God bless us all. And before we end, let us pray. I'm going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ once more. We come to you, Father. We thank you so much for speaking to us in your scriptures. And we thank you for your assurance that you will be with us until the end of the age. Father, may you give us the strength and the courage and the wisdom that we need to believe in your word and to dwell on it. Father, may you never leave us. Father, even though we might have gone astray as children, Father, we pray that your presence may never leave us. Accept us back when we come. And Father, give us the strength to walk with you in our daily lives. For this arm of prayer, in the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen. May God bless you until next Sabbath. Um, I was your teacher, teacher Aska Atieno from Mandaza. Be blessed.